Thank you, John Burton. As you all know, that's the theme from Star Wars. And I just want to say it's great to have the friendship and support of our very own Obi-Wan Kenobi, even though I can't recall a single Star Wars movie where Obi-Wan ever dropped the F-bomb. <laughs> For those of you that don't know me, my name's Tom Steyer. I'm not an elected official or a politician. Like many of you here today, I'm a private citizen. But like all of you here today, I'm a proud Californian and a proud Democrat. Until recently, I spent my professional life in business offices, not in convention halls. But last year, I left my job as a professional investor to take on what I believe is the greatest challenge of our generation, climate change. And I'm standing in front of you today because we are on the way to winning. I started an organization to bring climate change and energy policy to the forefront of American politics. It's called Next Gen Climate. Next Gen Climate is committed to fighting for the kind of world we want to pass on to our children. And we've already seen success, both here in California and across the country. We've seen success with farmers in Nebraska and families in Arkansas speaking out about the devastating effects oil pipelines can have on our land and our health. We've also seen success in Massachusetts and Virginia where voters chose clean energy leaders over special interests beholden to the fossil fuel industry. You and I are here today because in 2014, this important election year, the outcome is critical. This isn't our first time working together. In 2010, some out-of-state oil companies came to California thinking they could overturn our groundbreaking climate change laws. Some of you in this room are the authors of those laws. How wrong those companies were. We took on the out-of-state oil companies with Prop 23 and we won. People right here in this room came together and said, no way. And I was one of them. Then in 2012, we took on big special interests yet again with Prop 39. This time we worked together to close a loophole for out-of-state companies and to benefit both our economy and our environment and to make sure they paid their fair share. And guess what? We won again. But as many of you know, the battle for a level playing field is far from over. We may live in the proverbial land of milk and honey, agricultural bounty, a booming tech and entertainment industry, and the bright promise of a better tomorrow. But for too many Californians, that better tomorrow is still just a dream. While corporations are making millions of dollars, millions of Californians are still hurting. Six years after the Great Recession, we still have income inequality, underfunded schools, and protected special interests. Make no mistake, getting a fair shake for Californians means taking on some tough challenges, starting with energy and climate. Here in California, we're off to a great start. We have the best climate policies in the world, but we still have more work to do. Because to make sure that Californians are getting a fair shake, we have to ensure that our politics and policies give our children a world we're proud to leave them. In 2014, Next Gen Climate will push and do this in three specific ways. First, we need to take on special interests like big oil that profit from our natural resources and demand that they pay their fair share so our people get a fair shake. Because right now, let's face it, they don't. California is the only major oil producing state in the nation without a statewide oil extraction fee. That means that while the oil companies are adopting increasingly risky technologies to grow their profits, the next generation of Californians is left shouldering that risk while getting nothing in return. It's been suggested that this isn't the year to ask oil companies to pay their fair share that we know they will spend millions to convince Californians that this is somehow a tax on the people. Well, I have news for you. When we don't tax the oil companies, we are giving away over a billion dollars a year to companies who are taking our resources, which in effect is a tax on the rest of us. How can we look around in this room and call ourselves Democrats when we ask everyday Californians to pay the price for ending the budget crisis and repaying public schools, every single citizen 
except the very companies who are reaping billions from those same everyday Californians. And it is these same powerful corporations, many who receive billions in federal subsidies, who are in turn responsible for the pollution that leads to all sorts of costs that we as a society have to pay. The cost of a child in the Central Valley afflicted with asthma. The cost of cleaning up a community like Richmond, where noxious fumes have sent citizens to the hospital. The costs of extreme weather, from the forest fires in Southern California to our statewide drought that have impacted our state's economy and led to an emergency declaration. We all pay for these costs, every single one of us. Never mind the staggering debt that our children will be on the hook for when it comes to the health, economic welfare, and security of the California they will inherit. And our people get it. They are smart, and they realize they are not getting a fair shake. In 2012, we were told, don't try to close the loophole on out-of-state corporations, because the opposition will convince Californians that you're, what you're doing is a new tax on them. Well, the people of California were way too smart for that, and over 60% of them voted for a fair shake from these out-of-state companies, and Californians will support getting a fair shake from the oil companies who are, in effect, imposing a tax on each and every one of us. <laughs> Second, it is imperative that we do all we can to protect the health and safety of our people. We have seen all over the country the harm done by fossil fuel companies that put profits before people. Chemical spills in West Virginia tainting the water supply the polluting of Detroit by the Koch brothers as the result of high carbon, high sulfur, petroleum byproducts from the Alberta tar sands that resulted in a large black cloud hovering over the Detroit River last summer, or the terrible oil spill in Mayflower, Arkansas that I visited last year, and where we conducted a toxicity study on the crude oil that was flowing down the streets and into people's yards and determined just how dangerous the oil was. Deadly dangerous. And of course, we all remember the disaster in the Gulf involving BP. Despite all these terrible examples, when it comes to having the best public safety protections in place for the companies that are extracting our resources, we're still behind the curve. We owe it to Californians to make sure that oil is extracted safely in accordance with the strictest safety protections in the country. And we have seismic activity in California. With the complicated geology of the Monterey Shale in particular, big oil should not be rushing to extract until we've implemented, beyond a reasonable doubt, the toughest, safest, and most rigorous safeguards possible to ensure that California's communities don't suffer for the sake of big oil's bottom line. And let me be clear, until these protections are in place and the oil companies are paying their fair share, there should not even be a discussion of whether or not they should be allowed to move forward. But when it comes to a fair shake, our people need to have the tools to make sure they are, in fact, getting a square deal, especially since the energy companies seeking the ability to frack are, in effect, looking to tax us. In California, it takes a two-thirds vote by the legislature to impose taxes. In local communities, it requires a two-thirds vote to impose taxes. The business community has argued for years that this two-thirds vote is important to make sure they are not taken advantage of. Well, that exact same logic should apply when it comes to fracking. When the state decides to truly move forward on fracking, and I repeat that this discussion really should not even take place until they're paying their fair share and have demonstrated beyond a reasonable doubt that it can be done safely, then we need to level the playing field so that Californians can get a fair shake. <laughs> to, to do this, we must give our local communities the tools they need to make sure that people are getting a fair shake by requiring that a two-thirds vote take place at the county level as a requirement for the approval of fracking. This two-thirds vote requirement will empower local communities to secure the safety and health provisions their people deserve. It will give communities the right to determine whether fracking really is in their interest. And it gives the people the same two-thirds protections that businesses currently enjoy. After all, when it comes to the health and safety of our local communities, the burden of proof should be on the oil companies, not the other way around. Third, we must ensure that California continues to be a leader on climate, both in the West and around the world. Last year, we convened the governors of California, 
Oregon and Washington, the Premier of British Columbia, to discuss what became a historic regional agreement, a pledge to work toward a coordinated carbon market and clean fuel standard. This was a critical step forward because we know that as California goes, so goes the nation. This process is started, but it is far from over. We need to make the West Coast Collaborative a, a reality and let it lead the nation and the world. The spread of our ideas is the only assurance that the citizens of California get a fair shake. That's why I want you to join our efforts. Looking around the room, I know there are a lot of cell phones out there, which means we're close, you're closer to helping us make a difference. It's simple. Take out your phone and text the word JOIN, J-I-N, to this number, 90975. You'll get a message telling you what to do next. And you'll also get some great stuff. We have some super fancy, environmentally sensitive water bottles waiting for you. But most importantly, you'll be joining the fight for the 38 million Californians who deserve a fair shake. Climate change is the issue of our generation. And to truly level the playing field for this generation and for generations to come, we have to act now. We are Democrats. This is what we do. We stand together to elect candidates that are ready and willing to tackle climate change head on. We stand together to make climate change a priority for our policies and our politics. And most importantly, we stand together to make sure that Californians are getting a fair shake. Now, I hope some of you have already texted to join our efforts, but if you haven't, there's still time. Text the word JOIN to 90975. Because this isn't about water bottles or Star Wars. This is about Democrats standing up for what's right and Democrats winning in November. We are not here just to try. There is no second place in elections. Thank you very much for having me here today.